Hello, and welcome to another episode of Loda Pro, where I show you how to take your code to the next level. Now, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how we can work with some on save behaviors. Ace, what does that mean? Why are we doing this? What's the whole point of this on save change anyways? Well, let's say we have a particular problem. We have some contractors that we need to enter into Dataverse. Now, these contractors have a first name, last name, and a contract number. And we have another field in our table that is supposed to join all three of these together. Now, we could have a flow take care of this, where a flow will run, and it, after the record is created, it will automatically fill that value in. But what if we want that value to be pre-filled? What if we need to do some additional work with that value? Well, instead of having a flow do it, we can have our code do it. We can have it do something like this. where we fill in the first name, last name, and the contract number, and then we save it and it joins those values together. Now let's go ahead and jump right into how we get this part done. So on my form here, I have my uh, contractor form here with my simple fields. All I'm going to do, I'm not even gonna mess, I'm not gonna do anything to these fields. I am just going to make a change to the forms on save behavior. So I'm gonna go into my form, and I'm going to set up an event handler. Okay, the event type is going to be on save. On save has two different areas that we can really work with, pre-save and post-save. In this instance, we're working with pre-save. So when before the record is even uh, saved to Dataverse, those changes are being made, which is really handy when you have a flow that looks at when a record is modified. And if it looks at a particular field that you need to be filled in before it's saved, so it doesn't re-trigger over and over again, this is where that kind of thing comes in handy. And post save, where let's say you want the users to be navigated to a different page after the record has been created. That's where post save can come in. It can come in, perform some sort of behavior after the uh, record has been saved. Now you can test whether or not the save was successful, uh, but we will not be doing that in this video. Let me know if you want to see that down below, but let's continue. All right, I already have a library set up for my upgraded save behavior, which is a file you guys will be receiving in the description down below. And for the function, it's gonna be pw low to pro dot check save type. Where is this coming from? How do I know what this is? Well, I just so happened to write a file for this. So here is the code. Now. It's about 70 lines. It's not too hefty, but let's collapse everything down that isn't this check save type. So we don't have to worry about that for right now. What I have here is if the save type is one, join together these fields. Now, save type of one just means it's save only. There are different numbers depending on what your uh, specific save behavior is. So like for most tables or for all of the tables rather, there is a save and a save and close option. Those two have different save modes or save types as I've uh, called them. There's also things like send, book, uh, deactivate, reactivate. All of those different things have different save codes. And you can use those save codes to say, hey, for this particular instance, do this behavior. Now, you, as you can see here, I have one and two. If one is my save only, two is my save and close. And on save and close, I just have it filling in one uh, particular field with one particular value a static value, if you will. Now to test this out, let's go ahead and hit done here. Make sure you pass in your execution context. Always pass in the execution context every time. We're gonna hit done. And then we're gonna hit save and publish. Now, notice how there is an on save and an on load. You can set on, set, on save behavior on load. And I'll show you how to do that a little bit later in the video. But my form is saved and published. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh my form here. I'm going to give it another save just to be safe. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit save and close this time. Well, actually, I'm going to make one little change here. That way there's actually a dirty record, which is how it's officially called. Whenever you make a change to your record and it attempts to save it, it looks for what are known as dirty changes. Any changes where you have, they don't match against what you have in the database is going to be a dirty change. So I hit save and close here. And this marks it as default. 
We hit it as, uh, for this one, it was set as my save, but for this, whenever I hit save and close, it updates it to that particular value. Now you can control exactly what behavior happens on save and close, if you want them to navigate away, any sort of thing. But I want to take a look at a little bit deeper into this on save behavior. Now, I want to have it where on save, it navigates to a different page. Well, that's easy enough to do. If I wanna have both behaviors happen, I can just add an event handler. Now event handlers, they essentially will trigger in the order that you have them in. So first thing that's going to happen is it's going to check for the save type. The second thing that's going to happen, which is what I want to happen, is it's going to navigate away. Let's do that by first calling our function, pw load a pro dot, and we'll look at our file here. And this one is going to be post save behavior. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this and I'm gonna paste that in there just to make sure I don't mistype it. And I'm gonna pass in my execution context as the first parameter. I'm gonna hit done here. I'm also gonna hit save and publish and I'm gonna test this out. Now, this is supposed to execute on post save. So I did put it into the on save behavior. Now here's the problem with that. Let me go in. I'm just gonna pop that open so I have my access to my empty cache. If you're wondering how I did that, you just hit F12 on your keyboard and it'll pop open your uh, dev tools or you do right click inspect, either one. Um, when you right click on your reload, it'll pop open this menu and you can hit empty cache and hard reload. It's very handy when you're testing these things. Okay, let's go ahead and we can actually just hit save here. Okay. This is going to throw an error and it is correct to throw this error. Okay, for on save, there are specific properties that are available in the execution context that gets passed to our parameters. That box I made you check all the time, that is important. What happens there is certain uh, properties and methods are available. Things like uh, getting the save mode, having a prevent default to essentially stop the save behavior as it's going through. However, the function I just had you plug in is for post save behavior. With that, we have to kind of set it in a different place. While you can set post save behavior in the on save, it's better to do it in the on load. So let's go ahead and set that behavior. Now within the script here, I do have a loaded portion right here, where if the form is a new form, it's going to add the on save behavior. Regardless of the type of form, it is going to execute the post save behavior after it is done saving. So for this one, if the form type is one, I need to go ahead and add that on save behavior. That way it doesn't overwrite it if I ever need to make any changes to that or if a flow comes in and makes changes to that field. Okay, and then afterwards, it's going to then do the post save regardless of whether or not this is a new or an existing form. So let's go ahead and set that up. The first thing we need to do if we're gonna be testing this and going back and forth is we have to disable our handlers. To do it, uh, to disable our particular handler, you're gonna select your handler, and then you just uncheck this enable box. You don't have to uncheck the execution box unless you really want to, just make sure to turn it back on if you ever need to turn this back on. But just hit done and repeat on the second one. All right, let's go into our on load. Now I have mine disabled here, but, just to make it fair, I'll create a new one. So it's gonna be pw load a pro dot loaded. Almost every time I'll have it as loaded. And we will do what? Pass in the execution context, thank you. We're going to go ahead and check that field. And then we'll hit done. We then save and publish one more time. All right. And then we go back to our form, empty our cache and reload it. All right, our post save behavior is active. However, our on save behavior is not. Because we have it as whenever a new form is being created to enact that on save behavior, when I hit, well, if I add a C with another Y and hit save and close, it doesn't change to default. Now it does navigate me to accounts because that is what I have the post save behavior doing. That is this. So in the event that our save is successful, which is uh, get is save success and the event args comes from our execution context. 
Then I put in my page inputs and I say, hey, navigate to this page. So this is happening post save. So after the record is nice and done, it's not gonna change any other fields. It's just gonna kick it out to the next thing. But if I go back to my contractors here and I create a new one, if I do one, two, three, four, five, six, I know these aren't letters, but we're gonna use numbers. And if I hit save here, it's gonna save it, kick me out to accounts, and that's about it. The next thing that I have here, how am I setting these field values on save? Well, I created a formula to do this. Whenever you wanna take this code and make it your own, to make these changes, all you really have to do is update these fields. So for the set value on save, it takes a few different parameters. The execution context, obviously, the field to set, the join by, and the fields to join. Field to set is gonna be whatever field we want to have this value fill into. So for us, it's, or for me rather, it's contractor name. The join by is going to be whatever character you want to separate your first name, last name, and the contractor number, or whatever field you choose. And then the fields to join is an array of values. You can put in as many fields as you want here. What will happen is the code will cycle through those names, try to find that field, and if it can, it will take that field and add it to a list. And at the end, once it has all the fields and all the values gathered together, it's going to join them with your specified uh, separator. Now, I do have it as a default. If you do not specify a join by, then it puts in a space hyphen space, but you can change that whenever you get your hands on this code. To change your parameters, I have it on line 25. You can change PWLTP contractor name. Here's my join by field. And here are the fields that I want to join in. Now, if you are not familiar with JavaScript, that is okay. You don't really need to be super familiar, just enough to, you know, be dangerous. All you need to do is whenever you see this, these three dots in any of the code files that I give you, it just means that you can put as many additional arguments as you want, which is what these are. I have three here. If I put five here, 10 here, it doesn't matter. Uh, it would continue to add them on. And you can put the same field twice if you really need to. And for this, that's about it. Now, if you want to see more on the client API, more on these particular events, like on load, on save, let me know down below in the comments and I will see about making a video for that. But for now, that's about it. If you wanna find me, you can find me at pragmaticworks.com. If you wanna schedule a virtual mentoring session with me where I can help you out with problems like this, check out our booking site. And if you wanna learn a little bit more about model-driven apps and how to build with them, take a look at our Learn with the Nerds video, where we show you how to build a model-driven app within Dataverse. Alrighty, my name is Ace and thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye.